Hello everyone and welcome to the BFI um, Film Academy's second virtual lab. Uh, my name is Alex and I'm the Film Academy uh, Festival and Events producer. Um, I'm really excited about today's session. We'll be talking about what you um, young filmmakers can do in this time of social isolation um, to find collaborators online for your projects, for your short films, um, to um, network with industry professionals online and find mentors, and also how you can work on developing your online portfolios and um, profiles in general. Um, today's session uh, was supposed to be hosted by uh, Matthew Ajon, um, who is the talent executive at BFI Network and also the founder of Bound Cinema. Um, however, uh, due to um, this week's events, uh, Matthew has decided um, not to take part um, in this event and focus his energy instead on the Black Lives Matter uh, protests. And this is a decision that we fully support here at the um, uh, BFI Film Academy. Uh, but Matthew has kindly shared all his prep work um, that he's done for this session with us and also his questions um, for the panelists. Um, so uh, with his agreement, I'm stepping in to host the session um, and um, I will be asking his questions of our lovely panelists today. Um, and hopefully Matthew will be able to join us in another lab um, in the future soon. Uh, but before I introduce our panelists today, I just wanted to uh, run through a few practical things uh, for today's session. Uh, first of all, um, um, we have our, uh, some of our BFI Film Academy team working behind the scenes today. So my colleague Fiona will be managing the chat box. Um, so if you have any general questions about the BFI, about um, Film Academy, our labs program, or uh, about the Future Film Festival, the submissions for which are now open, uh, please feel free to introduce yourselves and ask those questions of Fiona um, in the chat box. Um, however, if you have any questions for our panelists today, then please put them in the Q&A box um, that you see on the bottom of the screen. Uh, and my colleague Laura will be managing um, that box so, um, throughout the session. So if you have any questions that you know you want to um, ask uh, immediately, please start putting them in, um, in that box. And we'll devote the last 15 minutes of this session to um, your questions and we'll try to answer um, as many of them as we can. Um, but um, I also um, wanted to thank our partners, um, the Rubin Foundation, who sponsor all BFI education events, um, and also Lacey. They're our competition partner, and we'll be giving away a Lacey rugged hard drive um, to one uh, lucky winner at the end of this session. So we've decided to do this competition a little bit differently this time, and we'll be awarding the best question asked of our panelists. So. Um, get your thinking caps on and don't forget to put your full name um, um, on um, Zoom so that when you're asking the question, we know who is asking that question. Um, we'll be announcing the winner, the winner at the very end of this session after we've said goodbye to our panelists. So please do stick around to hear if you are the winner. Um, and if you are not around um, to claim your prize in real time, we'll move on and call another name. Um, so stick around. Um, also, we um, got some really positive feedback from you after our last lab, how much you enjoyed networking with other filmmakers. And I know that some of you started little WhatsApp groups after our session, and we want to encourage that um, to happen more. And especially in light of the fact that today's session is all about uh, finding collaborators online. Um, so we've, what we've done is we've posted um, on our Facebook and Twitter channels uh, networking posts. So feel free to put your details in the comments and uh, link up uh, with each other. We would love to see. Um, that happen. Um, and um, before I introduce you to our panelists, I just want to say one last thing, which is that this session is being uh, recorded um, and the recording will be shared on the BFI Film Academy social channels um, next week. So um, today with us, uh, we have Hannah uh, Williams from Backstage, we have Petra Mandova from the Maddy Network, and also Jane Saunders from um, Screen Skills. So I will just um, ask um, our panelists to um, unmute themselves um, and to um, introduce, if you can please introduce yourselves to our audience, just say a little bit about yourselves and also what your organization does specifically um, for uh, filmmakers age 16 to 25. So young uh, aspiring filmmakers. Um, Hannah, do you wanna start? Sure. So I'm Hannah, um, it's lovely to be here. I'm sure I've met some of you already in the, um, the in-person film labs uh, over the last couple of years we've been the casting partner for the 
future film labs. Um, I am a casting director and I've worked in casting for the last 10 years um, and I now work with Backstage alongside my casting work um, and Backstage are a casting platform and actor publication so we help um, young filmmakers and young actors find work and find talent um, for all manners of castings from short films to high paying commercials and feature films. Um, and we are in the UK and we are international and um, our headquarters is in New York. And my job with them is to make sure that everybody knows what a great resource it is. Um, I am on the ground, so I'm, I'm letting them know about new uh, news and updates and things which we should be paying attention to and highlighting in our ton of editorial content that we've got running through the website. Um, and um, yeah, just, just building up the business here for them and making sure people know that um, they can use us. Amazing. Uh, Petra? Oh, uh, Petra. Uh, hi. Hear us? Lovely to be here. Okay. Yes, we can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, now we can. Okay, cool. Sorry, I have a little bit of Wi Fi problem, but I hope it's going to go well. Uh, so, hello. Uh, my name is Petra. I am a business development executive for Crew UK at uh, Monday Network. And uh, Monday Network is uh, one of the largest uh, community of uh, creative people working in uh, film, TV, uh, music videos, theater. Uh, and uh, so our kind of main focus is uh, we uh, advertise jobs for people working in film. So uh, the two main uh, people who will use us is the talent that are looking for jobs. So they build out their portfolios, they, do, they create their profiles and uh, share uh, everything they worked on and on the other side we have the employers who are posting uh, castings or crewings and uh, so they can kind of uh, find the right talent for their projects that is also uh, Monday is also there is it's a, a huge community hub so you can connect with people uh, you can check other people's work, show reels. Uh, so it's also like a showcase. There is also a directory for people if they uh, need equipment. Uh, there is also notice board, uh, forum. So it has a lot of, uh, you know, things that can help you to connect and uh, find the right talent for your project. And my role in the company is uh, I uh, meet the employers, kind of uh, hear about their projects and uh, I, I will tell them how best to, like how to reach out to people, uh, what, how they can use the platform, but also, uh, so I'm building a relationship with the, with the employers, but also building relationship with different partners. Uh, or for example, doing a lot of uh, school talks, uh, so visiting schools, uh, kind of encouraging uh, young people, you know, how to use the platform and also how to build their uh, CVs. And uh, we also, you know, do a lot of events that should help people to kind of network um, and similar things. Nice. Um, and Jay? Hello, so I'm Jane Saunders. I work at Screen Skills. Um, and Screen Skills is the industry led body um, for skills in the screen industries. Um, most of what we do is um, really for over 18s, um, but our careers team um, work with people um, who are under 18. Um, and there's loads of information on our website about all the different things that we do, but we basically focus in on uh, training and development and skills development for people who want to enter into the screen industry, um, progress within it or return to it. Um, the sorts of things that the careers team used to do was loads of events um, and now some of those have moved online. Um, and there's also loads and loads and loads of resources on the screen skills website in the careers section um, that anybody can access. Um, in terms of some of the other things that we do as, a, as an organisation, um, my specific area is um, I run a mentoring programme, uh, which again is for over 18s. Um, and there's also um, a CPD arm, so continuing professional development for people who are already in the industry. 
Um, and there's also um, a, a team who uh, offer bursaries um, for people to apply for funding um, to that may be for training and development, um, but that may also be for them to be able to um, uh, get a job. And so I know in the past that that team has awarded bursaries, for example, for um, for driving lessons um, uh, and maybe for a kit that may be useful for people to actually use and learn about um, to enable them to be um, more able to secure work. So we do a whole raft of uh, training and development type activities um, across all of the screen industries. Um, and uh, my background is I was at the BBC for about 30 years. Um, my my, my uh, expertise, if you like, is in training and development, um, specifically here around, uh, around mentoring. Cool. Uh, thank you. So shall we start about talking about um, what filmmakers should do in this time of social isolation to find collaborators for their projects online? Um, so um, Hannah, if we start with you and talk about casting. Um, uh, so obviously um, casting in person um, is not necessarily uh, possible at the moment. So can you talk a little bit about um, how filmmakers can continue with the pre-production process and finding the right cast for their project um, during this time of lockdown? Yeah, so the casting process is all online and we're, all we're doing is casting through tapes and through Zoom, as all of us are spending a lot of time on Zoom at the moment. So, um, I mean, the, the thing is, it, 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 there was a lot of that before anyway, a lot of self-taping before we get into the casting room. But now, um, I think that this is um, only going to make that become more of a thing even after isolation. So it's a good time to learn how to do it properly and present yourself well. Um, so yeah, mostly everything is just being done through a self-tape. Um, and then um, we'll do recalls maybe on Zoom after that point so um yeah so what would you advise where should um the directors who uh, you know want to call producers who want to cast star casting for their short films where should they look how should they uh, what should that process look like when it's online so um you i think if you're going into any situation where you're going to be cast in a project you need to be sitting down at the beginning whether it's in person or digitally and working out right how are we exactly going to find the person and how we're going to be able to make a well-informed decision based on how we cast them. So you obviously need to decide all of the things that you need to see to make it and make you able to make that decision well enough. So um, yeah, it's, it's usually you'll send the actor, um, so you'll put out your casting online, so you can post out your casting brief on backstage, you get all your applicants in, and then from that point then, you'll be sending out the sides, which is a little short excerpt of the script, which has got a bit of a pivotal moment or has got some sort of highlight in the character that you really wanna see. Um, so you send that out to the actor, the actor tapes for you, and then you receive the tapes, and then you go through all the tapes, and then you recall from that point. So um, the process is, is very similar, obviously, than, to what you do if you're gonna be casting in the room, but you just don't get to see people in person. And there are great positives to that in the sense that we are still able to carry on casting when we're all in isolation. And also it does open up the door for a lot of other people. I think that one of the things that's gonna come out of this is um, a realization that there needs to be more access for people who don't live in London um, or for people who work um, and have to stay afloat. So, um, so those are good things to come out of it, but you also need to can take, take into consideration that you're not going to be able to direct that actor as you would in the room and you're not going to be able to get a sense of them for if they're enthusiastic about the project if they'd be a good person to work with how flexible they are so um so the process is is the same in in the way that we filter through the applicants and see them perform but it, it is very limiting in some senses as well and how does that work for um crew petra i imagine it's a, quite a similar process as well yeah, it's uh, so basically it's an online platform. So for us, uh, nothing really changed because people are posting uh, their jobs and their projects. So it's uh, 
kind of works quite similar you know you you kind of provide all the information about the project uh, and you describe your ideal candidate and uh, after you you put the um, you know description online and people can apply for your job they should you know so on the platform everyone creates their profile so they will also it's it's your portfolio already but you need to write a, a cover note for for that particular project and uh, you also attach your showreel uh, maybe some people have different showreels so you would attach if it's a, a document uh, for example if you are an editor and you are applying for documentary project which is quite a lot uh, recently as, as you can imagine people are doing a lot of documents about COVID-19 and what is happening right now so you would uh, add your documentary uh, show reel. Uh, you would describe why you meet the criteria. Why are you the best person to do this job? And you submit your uh, application. And after, uh, obviously, the the employer or, or the director, producer, they will get in touch with you, and they will take the. Uh, if you are shortlisted, that you know they will take the conversation and probably do a Zoom talk and go through the project. Okay. Um, well, in a little bit, we'll talk about how to best present yourselves when you are sending those cover notes, when you are sending those reels, and, and how to uh, best, I guess, tailor uh, what you send to the project that you're applying for. But just before we get to that, I just want to ask Jane about networking professionally. So not, not, not networking with your peers and uh, trying to find collaborator for your projects online, but networking with industry professionals, perhaps if people are looking for mentors. What's the best way to approach some more experienced industry uh, people online and, and uh, potential mentors? I think there are probably loads of ways of actually approaching people these days. Um, so we've got obviously things like email, but also all the, um, the social media platforms as well. Um, and I don't think it's a problem to approach people. Um, don't be shy about it. The worst that can happen is that somebody doesn't reply to you or um, says no. Um, but if you don't ask, you don't get. Um, so I would think about what is it you want people to, to know about you? What is it you want people to think about you? Um, and maybe the work that you do and then work backwards from there in terms of what it is that you're going to, um, uh, how you're going to approach people and what it is you're going to say to them. Um, I do think in terms of, of when, when we're networking and when we're, we're trying to meet people um, and increase our network, we need to think about it rather than um, in a way of, I want to get as much as I possibly can out of other people. Um, try to think about it in maybe a slightly different way. Try to think of it um, more as a, a bit more giving and taking. And maybe when you do reach out to people and you do make contacts, try to see that maybe more as um, a, a partnership or a contact that is beneficial to both you and them. So, and maybe that the being together in, in you know, networking with these people is going to benefit both of you more than you ever could have imagined. So think about maybe when you are, are making contact with people, um, thinking about uh, maybe giving more than you're getting, um, trying to see things um, really maybe from their point of view as well, and maybe do some listening uh, and sort of you know, make it more sort of um, equal, if you see what I mean rather than you doing all the talking um, or all the taking, make it much more uh, in your head, um, much more as a sort of a, as a partnership. Um, so think as well about maybe rather than these, these networking partnerships being um, a moment in space, a moment in time only for the now, in terms of our mindset, maybe try and think about this as maybe a longer term partnership, a longer term relationship, um, because I think that then we have a different aspect of how we actually interact with that individual. Um, in terms of mentoring, um, I think the things to really key things to think about is uh, really initially, what is it you want from a mentor? Now, it needs to be something that is within their control. So if you want um, um, you know, a BAFTA or an Oscar by Christmas, that's not actually within the control of your mentor. If you want to make your first film um, 
in the summer, um, that probably isn't within the control of your mentor. So really think carefully, those things I mentioned are great, by the way, have those dreams and those ideas and those, those future career goals. Um, but think about, well, what, is, what, is, what could a mentor help me with? How could I work with a mentor um, that will maybe help me take some steps towards getting where I want to? Um, some things that maybe are within your control and within their control to do together. Um, and then think about, well, what is it that, um, that, that I benefit, how, how, what, when I'm in a good relationship with somebody, um, you know, what is it that inspires me? Um, what is it that I find motivating? What is it that draws me to people? And write down some of those criteria, because with a mentor, it needs to be one where you have a partnership, where you have a bit of rapport. So really think about what is it that I benefit from in terms of uh, rapport with, a, with, a, with um, uh, somebody who inspires me and, men, um, and motivates me. And then that gives you, if you like, a, like a little sort of person spec or a job description of your ideal sort of mentor. Um, and then think about, well, who do I know maybe who matches some of that criteria? Or um, who do I have in my network who may be able to help me find somebody who would be suitable to be my mentor? So don't just think about it on, in your own silo. Definitely think about your network. But think about the people who are in your network and in their network. Um, so you can tap into uh, to different people. Maybe look online, um, people that you are already, you who inspire you, or maybe you're already connected with. Um, and then reach out to them. You know, I think there's nothing wrong with reaching out to people, particularly in this day and age, particularly in this particular situation that we're in. Um, the worst that can happen is they don't reply or they say no. But if you think about what is it you want to get across to that individual, you know, what is your USP, for example, your unique selling point, or what is it you want them to know about you? Um, and then you can then um, make that part of the initial contact. And I, I generally say to, to people who are looking for mentors, um, sort of do three strikes and you're out. And what I mean by that is if you approach them once and they don't respond, I think you can legitimately approach them twice more. And then if they still don't respond, they're not the right person for you at this time. So move on and find somebody else. Um, so uh, that's sort of in a nutshell, um, I would say some of the main things to consider when thinking about a mentor and also how to approach them. That's great. Um, and I, I was really keen to talk about um, what online resources and programs are available um, to filmmakers um, at this time of, you know, lockdown um, um, to, to interact um, with industry professionals and also with um, their peers. Um, so maybe, Jane, you can tell us a little bit about how the mentoring network, how does it work now? Is, is the program still ongoing, even in undertaken virtually or... Uh, yep, so uh, we're actually, I was saying to Alex earlier on, actually, we are um, busier than we've ever been um, because we have all our, our program, a uh, screen skills mentoring program, uh, which is for 18s and overs only, I'm afraid. Um, our careers team work with, with under 18s. Um, so our mentoring program, we're busier than we've ever been. We've always said, um, because we cover the whole of the UK and we cover um, film, TV, animation, games and VFX, we've always said, don't let location be a barrier. So most of our mentoring partnerships that we've created and we've, we've matched, um, we encourage people to use WhatsApp or the telephone. Um, and so, of course, in this right now, um, those are the only things that are really available to us. So um, we're busier than ever. Um, so at the moment, our mentoring program is temporarily closed. Um, unfortunately, it will open again um, later in July. Um, as, a, as an overall programme, uh, we are running um, mentoring until the end of March 2022. So even if you're not 18 at the moment, we will still be around um, until about that time. Um, but our programme, um, mentors are volunteers and mentees are volunteers um, from across the whole industry. And we do encourage people to think about maybe uh, being mentored by somebody who is maybe not like you. Um, and that might be something from a different department or a different sector, um, because it's not about, it, it, mentoring isn't a recruitment agency. Mentoring isn't a training course. Um, mentoring is more about you and your career development and your progression. So if you are lucky enough to get um, matched, um, we typically have maybe four times the amount of mentees register for our programme 
as we have mentors. So if anybody out there are being up, up for being a mentor, then uh, come our way. We're definitely happy to have you. Um, and you don't need to be a tip top expert in your field to be a mentor, because if somebody wants to enter into the industry, somebody maybe who has already got um, one or two years experience would be a perfect mentor for that person who is one stage in terms of career stages um, below them. So our programme, I said, if you're lucky enough to get, uh, to get matched, um, because we do have probably four times the amount of mentees as we have mentors, so we can't guarantee a match. Um, but our programme would run for six months, um, and that would be six hours that you would have contact time with your, with your mentor. Um, we do have some, um, an online learning module about mentoring, one for mentors and one for mentees, um, on our website. Um, so I think that's in the... Um, training and education section. So if you wanted to know a bit more about mentoring itself, um, then, um, uh, then you can have a look at our website in the training and education section. I think we're going to try and post as many links as uh, we can in the chat. I think Fiona and Zaki are working on that, um, just um, as we mentioned them. But okay. um, I'd, I'd encourage them as well to um, maybe post a link to um, Screen Skills Masterclass pages. Um, I think when we all first went into lockdown, um, uh, Screen Skills created loads and loads and loads and loads of masterclasses. Um, and I think, um, you know, there were 500 people for most of them and people couldn't get on onto them. They were booked up. So a lot of them are slowly but surely, um, slowly but surely, um, being sort of edited a bit and repurposed um, and being put online. Um, on the Screen Skills YouTube channel, but also on our website under Masterclasses. Um, so they're all free. I can see in the chat that someone says they're really useful. Um, <laughs> you might also want to think about some of our case studies as well, um, just to find out how other people are doing things. Um, uh, that not necessarily in lockdown, um, but there's a load of resources um, and also on the careers pages as well. Um, in the bursaries that you mentioned, um, I believe that they're, um, they're available for online training in this um, yeah. isolation, yeah? I, I believe so. I'm not an expert in bursaries. Um, I know that um, there is all sorts of guidelines and criteria um, and the, the, the Screen Skills Bursaries web page um, and the guidelines are really clear. Um, and if you have any queries about it, you can also phone into the bursaries team and they'll give you some advice. Um, but yeah, bursaries are absolutely available for all sorts of different things. Um, so yeah, do go and have a look at that because they are, they are open at the moment. So mentoring for mentees is closed at the moment, but we will be opening again in July. Um, but bursaries are absolutely open. Um, and um, I think you could, there's also a film you can have a look, which gives you a bit more information about what it's like to receive a bursary and what the process is like as well. So um, definitely go and have a look at our bursaries page. Um, yeah. Good point, Alex. Definitely go and look at that. Great. Um, and then uh, moving on to maybe Petra, if you want to talk about any resources or programs that the Mandy has available in this time of social isolation to help filmmakers, or if you know just that in general, it doesn't have to be restricted to the Mandy, if you guys know of any great programs that you think would benefit our filmmakers. Um, yeah, of course. I, I think one of the most positive things about the, this period is uh, there's a lot of people who are stepping up and trying to help. And um, we like, we, since the beginning, since the lockdown, we've been trying to engage our members a lot. So we launched uh, straight away like a competition for filmmakers to do short films. Uh, now at the moment we are preparing uh, CV surgery with uh, BAFTA winner producer Rebecca O'Brien, which she worked with a lot of in uh, she worked with Ken Loach a lot, uh, so that uh, is still open and people can apply now because uh, there's going to be the, the surgeries are on Tuesday and Wednesday. So if anyone is interested, you can find it on our uh, website. Uh, so they're individual sessions. Individual sessions. Right. Yeah. So it's it's a great opportunity yeah. to get feedback from one of the best in, in the industry. But also we, we've been doing surgeries with uh, casting directors. Uh, we've been doing surgeries with our members just to kind of give them feedback on, on their CVs and their profiles. Uh, we've been, now we are running a kids competition. So for child actors, uh, they can showcase their talents. 
Uh, also, I've been doing a lot of online talks with uh, schools. Uh, we've been sharing a lot of resources about what is happening, if there is any help, uh, also to kind of keep in touch with uh, the guidelines from the government. Uh, there is, we put together a whole page of resources, what you can find, uh, how you can stay engaged and uh, how you can build your portfolio, uh, what you should focus on. So um, Great. we did like a Facebook live event, you know, so it's like a lot of things is happening. So it's, it's quite a, you know, a great period. And two. all of this information is available on your website and social channels, right? Yeah, yeah. If people want to check out. So if you applied for a one-on-one -on -one, um, session with Petra today, but haven't been selected, you have more opportunities to, to talk to Mandy um, and have your CV reviewed, but just um, check out their website um, for opportunities. Um, and Hannah, what are you guys doing? So um, as soon as things started to kick off in the worst way, possible for this industry um, as I mentioned before a large the way the backstage started was um, as a broadsheet newspaper in New York so um, the publication we, we're turning out probably 10-ish articles a day which are all aimed at giving resources and information to actors and filmmakers um, about how they can find their craft and uh, work on their technique and um, learn about different opportunities and things like that so when this all started happening um, very very quickly within the space of a couple of days we uh, formulated uh, what we're calling the digital slate so and um, that's part of um, us helping people learn more about the industry and um, we've had amazing talks with casting directors uh, Lauren Evans who cast um, Sex Education and um, Louise Kiley who cast uh, Normal People and um, Rachel Freck who cast The Office and we've had loads of amazing people Sophie Holland The Witcher um, and then other webinars which have been um, uh, maybe breaking down a script. So how do you find your characterization within the text if you don't have much context to that text? Um, and loads of different things we've been doing like that, present yourself online and stuff. So that's all on the backstage website and I've been hosting them in the UK for them. And like Petra said, the amount of support and help that people want to give at this moment has been really eye-opening for me, even personally, to know how supportive our industry is. So um, we've been doing loads of stuff like that, but I know other places have been doing loads of stuff as well. Um, I really wanna mention when I wrote down earlier, um, it's called the Collective Creative Initiative and it's, um, it's being run by uh, Rosie and James Pearson of Pearson Casting. And they are doing full days of seminars with casting directors and things like that. So um, even though they're, they're producing very similar content to us in that, I really want to highlight what they're doing because they are, um, have worked very, very hard. And this is what's amazing about the industry at the moment is that we're all helping each other out. Um, what else have we been doing? Um, we've, we've introduced loads of new software onto Backstage to help digital casting, which I can go through in a bit because I think you're going to ask about that type yep, of stuff. Yeah, that's my next question. Yeah. Okay, I'll wait. <laughs> um, um, and then um, outside of that, um, we've been running one-to-ones and much like what Petra does, we've got a very similar job in what we do for Backstage and for Mandy. So I've been speaking with um, film schools about how they can cast their projects and um, doing talks like this, you know, wherever and whenever. Talking about casting. Perfect. Okay, so that's perfect segue into we have to talk about presenting yourselves online, online portfolios, um, and um, yeah, how to make your um, make your um, profile, make your reels, make your CVs um, stand out. Um, so I don't know, Hannah, do you want to start? Yeah, sure. So, um, so shall I talk about? Sorry, I'm so sorry. What were we? I just got distracted <laughs> by the comment box. It's really the comment box is really distracting. I don't know how to switch that off. 
Okay, I've closed now. Sorry. So it's, um, we, we have a few minutes before we open to audience questions. So just to talk about presenting yourselves online. Obviously, you and Petra will talk loads more about that in the, um, this afternoon sessions. But just like what are the top tips or maybe the common mistakes people make when presenting themselves online, whether that's through their, um, you know, um, reels or, or CVs or, or, or maybe even during casting digital virtual casting calls. Okay. Uh, let me break it down into different different sections. So show reel. If you don't have any material for your show reel, just record something. Um, even if it's a little self tape with dialogue with someone off camera and you're reading and bouncing off that person, or you've got a monologue in your own little repertoire. Um, I was just um, record it in a well lit area and put that as your show reel. It's better to have something than nothing as long as it's good work. Other aspects of show reel, only show your best work. Um, if there's something in there that you're not too sure about, take it out. Because when you think about when a casting director is going through something, they are flicking through a lot of the time. So if I flick to a part which doesn't show you in the best light, that might turn me off you and then make you maybe not be on the top of my pile anymore. So always show your best work and a good variation of your work. Make sure... <laughs> Sorry, I, um, I'm going to try and keep this like as, as concise as I can. Just make sure that in your show reel, we are looking at you and there's no dead space. So make sure that it's you're the focus of what we're seeing on the screen. In terms of CV, make sure that you are keeping it update, up to date as much as possible. Headshot needs to be up to date as much as possible. It's the worst thing ever when you bring someone into a cast in and um, the director's like, they look nothing like <laughs> what you've told me they look like. So just make sure you're keeping that up to date. Self tapes, um, well lit area. This, this is like perfect framing. Maybe if I go down a little bit. The main thing is we wanna be able to see your face and we wanna be able to see the light in your eyes to see any micro reactions and um, screen acting is a lot about subtlety. So um, just make sure that it's all very well lit and it's here, unless you've been otherwise directed. Introduce yourself, take your time, do it a couple of different ways and see which way sticks. Like we said earlier, you don't have um, the privilege of having someone to direct you. So um, really work out what the nuances in the script that you want to bring out the character and film it a couple of times and then send off your sides. Um, but the, the main thing out of everything is just to keep everything up to date as much as possible and show your very best work. And if you're not sure, ask someone else to have a look at it and say, look, does it show me in the best light that I can possibly show myself in? Perfect. And Petra, what would you add for that in terms of like crew? So not behind the, uh, the camera um, talent. Well, there, are, there are some great tips from Hannah. I think it's, uh, it's quite the same, you know, uh, to update your profile, but also for crew, it's, uh, it's a little bit different in a way I would see, I would say just make a, a master CV to pull from because there is a lot of people especially uh, you know young people they are like oh I can do a little bit of that a little bit of that I can be runner but I can also be editor I can be DOP so the most important thing is uh, tweak the CV to the specific job and uh, put the most relevant information in the top and uh, also you can have a different CVs you know so you have a CV for runner you have a CV for editor for DOP because uh, you always need to understand that there is uh, you are in a huge competition and if there is a, a employer that wants a runner and they will receive um, 200 CVs 200 application and maybe 100 of them of, is going to say filmmaker just in the title and the rest is going to uh, say runner so you can you know just use a common sense to kind of see that, okay, probably everyone, all the CVs that say filmmaker, they will go maybe on a different, on no pile, uh, because obviously maybe they would feel, the recruiter would feel, oh, they, they don't want to be really runners, you know, or that's not their aim. Uh, and uh, also uh, I would say when it comes to uh, cover Oh, we might have lost Petra. The cover notes to, you know, relevant job. So you could see on the side quite a lot of time people just um, 
uh, they have like a generic cover note and they Can you hear me? Yes, now no. we can. Um, the picture is facing yeah. but we could hear you. Yeah, go okay, on. What, what was the last thing you, you, you could hear? No, 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 we, we heard everything. Just go. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so a lot of people forget about the oh. cover notes. And the thing is that you need to put yourself in the shoes of the uh, employer who is who wants to hire you so what they want to see and also when you when you uh, write the cover note make a research about them about them and just uh, maybe also just uh, say hello and the name of the recruiter or the company maybe you should do your research what they have done in the past and you could see on Monday, there is a lot of uh, projects that are really personal, you know, so you need to understand that it's not just a company, a production company, but it's a, it's a person and they have their projects. So you need to empathize that in the cover note and that would already make you stand out from, from the other people. And uh, the next thing is the show reels. That's uh, definitely as everything that Hannah said is, is absolutely relevant to crew as well. It shouldn't be, you should showcase your best things. It shouldn't be more than 90 minutes. Uh, it, uh, you should also credit all the people that work on the uh, show reel. That's probably a little bit different from the cast because you kind of, I think it's a, it's a good way to uh, you know, say that, okay, I've done project, but there's a lot of other people who worked on it. It's just a nice gesture to do so. But what you should, what you should also include is your Instagram, because now, nowadays there is, uh, uh, Instagram is a huge tool and you can showcase your talent there. Uh, so just, um, I had a meeting with an employer uh, recently and they, they are, for example, they are recruiting or they are hiring uh, DOPs uh, just based on their Instagram, you know, because Instagram, it's your, you know, kind of artistic eye. So you should definitely put your Instagram uh, there as well. And um, I would say they are, uh, these are the main tips. Perfect. Would, yeah. They're great. <laughs> Um, and Jane, um, is there anything you would add um, when um, presenting yourself to um, industry professionals and potential mentors? Anything at all that you could add to what Hannah and Petra said? Yeah, so it, uh, some of it goes back to um, what is it you want them to know about you? What do you want them to think about you? Um, and then if you like display or demonstrate some of those things. I do think, you know, underneath it all, it, it, it's be, be authentic. Um, let the person see through whatever medium that you're showing them um, who you are. Um, so make sure that it's authentic, make sure that it's honest. Um, and I think that that will then yourself, if you like, will, will shine through. Perfect. Um, and I think we'll open up to audience questions now because I'm seeing 76 questions. So we better um, get started on them. Um, I think uh, the first one um, I want to ask is kind of like ties in well with what we were just discussing is um, it's from Julia and she's asking, what advice do you have for people with imposter syndrome uh, mm -hmm. when networking and advertising your skills? Um, I, I wish I knew the answer to that because I would mm -hmm. like some of that. You <laughs> Jane, I, you may I, be yeah, I could, <laughs> Yes, I can answer this. Um, I think probably loads of people have some form of imposter syndrome. Um, so welcome to the club, basically. Um, uh, I think, um, so I, I think if, you, if, if I said to you, um, you know, I've done this in training courses with people as well. Um, you know, if you take a playing card, um, you know, a, a, a two is very um, lacking in confidence. Um, and a king is very confident. Um, and if, if you drew a playing card and you got a three and you, you played out being at a level three, um, but if you then took a queen and you, you acted out being that confident person, you can do it. You can do it. But what it is about is about maybe it's about believing in yourself in that moment. You're, you still have to be you. It's not about, oh, well, you know, Fred over there, he's really confident and, oh, I should be like Fred. No, you just need to think about who you are. What is it you want people to know about you? Um, and yeah, it does take a bit of guts, but you only have to be yourself. Um, and sometimes when I've been to networking events, um, I, I try to focus in on people who are maybe on their own. 
Um, so maybe sort of just, you know, take a bit of a leap of faith. Um, and maybe as well, a bit of advice would be to think about what is the first thing you're going to say to that person, um, whether it's online or whether it's you know, when we get back to doing things in person to person, what is your opening line going to be? Because then once you've started, it's just a bit easier to follow on from that. And remember, any interaction between humans, there's 50% my responsibility and 50% the other person's responsibility. So you don't need to go in there and fill the space. You need to be in, go in there maybe and say a bit about you or be the catalyst to a conversation. It takes it to people. So be That's kind to yourselves, but be yourselves um, and you can do it. Perfect. Uh, can I add something to yes, it? Yes, of course, add. I would say when it comes to networking, uh, I think you shouldn't be too hard on yourself. Uh, it's, it's good to have a maybe goal before you go to an event and maybe you can say, okay, I'm just gonna stay here one hour. I will do as much as I can, but uh, you know, don't expect that you're gonna go to a networking and you're gonna, you know, end up uh, having a, a job offer or, or things like that. I would say it's just to connect with people. Uh, bear in mind that everyone there is, has the same goal. You know, they want to, you know, uh, connect with other people. So try to also engage, uh, you know, if you are in, in the group, try to engage other people uh, to the conversation and try to introduce people. Uh, I think that this all will come back to you. Like, don't don't think that if you start network networking, that uh, uh, you know there is uh, there is the sweet uh, job after you know. But uh, it's it's most building the connection and after using them sometimes because uh, uh, maybe uh, you know you met someone, but you will uh, get in touch with them later on, and it's just building these connections and. Um, I would say don't don't forget to follow up after networking. I think that's that's a lot of uh, times that people forget. You know, they are like, yeah, I've done it. You know, I did, I did my thing, but they forget to follow up. And I would also advise uh, if you go to networking, always talk to the person who is in charge, because they are the the main person that knows the people who are in the uh, in the event, and they can introduce you. You know, so that's uh, what I would add to it. Um, yeah, I, go on. Sorry, Alex. I just wanted to, to mention as well because, and be, just because of the age group that we're 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 talking to, it's something that definitely gets easier as you get older. And um, something that I've really realised in the last couple of years, which has been really, um, I don't know, just eye opening and just really calming to me in my career, is all of the people that were the same as me, you know, when I was in my early 20s and we all wanted to work really hard and we were all assistant casting directors, whatever we were doing, all of those people now are working at higher levels. And so I don't feel as much pressure anymore that everything is so far out of my reach. So it, it is a time thing as well. I think that if you are early 20s or I'm, some of you are uh, 16, 17, it will come with time and your networks are going to grow and you will get more confidence in yourself. That being said, as I just mentioned, I don't think it fully ever goes away, <laughs> but you do get more confidence in yourself for sure. Yeah. But also I, I would like to add that if, uh, if you are in a networking situation, just uh, be aware that, uh, you know, all the seniors people who are probably networking as well, they, they have already experiences, you know, so they will engage you in the conversation. And if you are afraid to lead the conversation, they will definitely, you know, take charge and, uh, you know, kind of keep the conversation going because they are more experienced and they, they feel for you, you know, they really do. And I think what you said, Petra, and Jane mentioned earlier on in the conversation, I think that don't underestimate the value of 
long-term uh, relationships. So, um, you know, nurture all your relationships. Don't think about just who can help you now and who can be of use to your project that you're currently working on, but just nurture all relationships because you never know in 10 years time, somebody that you met in a networking event may be um, really a great person um, to know um, for your future project um, that you haven't even thought of yet. Um, so yeah, nurture all relationships. Don't just, you know, do a one contact and that's it. Um, grow them and, and value them. Um, and also don't, don't think about just what you can get from others, but what you can give to others. Make yeah, it more of a true. synergistic partnership as opposed to just a one way thing. Yeah. Okay, moving on to um, another question. Uh, maybe um, this is um, a good one for you, Petra, but it's advice on multi-skilling. Um, so uh, Ruth Atkin asked this. She's a student and she specialized in producing. Uh, but is wondering whether she should be spending time developing skills in another area, such as editing, um, or is laser focusing on one area a better thing to do? Uh, I would say, folk, I, from my perspective, it's better to focus on one thing, but definitely if you want to, you know, uh, get more skills that can really help you in the job as well. But uh, be just aware, what is your main focus? What is your main goal? What do you want to be? Do you want to be a producer or editor? And uh, so it's great to developing these skills and they can definitely help you, but still uh, it would, it's good to have one focus, what you want to you know, go for. Yeah. Because um, that you, that you, it, it can lead to a sideways, maybe you, you don't want to have, but... Uh, yeah, it depends. Like everyone's path is uh, is individual, so you know, it's their choice. Yeah, um, I have a question for um, um, Hannah. Uh, we um, spoke about um, a lot about casting and uh, what if you're an actor or what if you're a producer or a director looking um, for actors for your short film, but we didn't talk about casting directors. Um, so Lucilla is asking, how does one become a casting director and what sort of training do you need to do and what sort of experience should you get? So um, I came into casting in quite a different way than I suppose what's sort of traditional. I started in background casting um, and I worked for a few years in that and then documentaries and then I worked um, assistants and casting directors and then I went and started my own projects. The usual route traditionally has been that you assist a casting director and then you get made an associate with a casting director, maybe the same one, and then you go out on your own. We're all freelancers and we go from project to project. I mean, there's some in-house casting directors at like the BBC and things like that, but um, most of us in film and commercials and things like that are freelance and we go from project to project. So we're always poaching for work. Um, so um, that's been the traditional way of doing it. And if you are interested in getting into casting, then you just need to watch some, find out who the casting directors are on films that you like and work out your taste for actors. And um, because it's good to go and work with somebody who you um, appreciate their work. So, um, you know, you'll learn from them and, and that's hopefully the way that you'll work in the future. However, there is a new course at NFTS, which I think is a 10 month course. Um, and it is the first course of its kind, which is so solely on casting which is amazing and I wish it was around 10 years ago but um but yeah that's that's a new thing that is um I think is going to really help the casting industry and accessibility into it because it can be very difficult at the beginning to um forge a path which is sustainable because some of the contracts and some of the ways that you help out with casting directors can be on a week by week basis and obviously if you're living in London especially that's really, really difficult to commit to. So um, I think that all these things happening now are going to um, hopefully help us diversify the, the cast and director pool. And Fiona has just posted a link um, to that uh, NFTS casting course in the chat box if you want to check it out. Cool. Um, for Jane, we have a question from Charlotte Murphy. Um, she is asking, what do you think is important to include in a cold email or message when reaching out, uh, reaching out to new industry contacts? 
Um, I think um, now whether you say to somebody, I want you to be my mentor, whether you say that first of all, it's probably up to you to decide because you might want to actually um, have a bit of interaction with them before you decide whether they actually they meet some of your criteria. Um, but I think a little bit about um, why you're contacting them or what made you contact them as individuals. So what is it you admire about them? Um, you know, and maybe um, some elements about what you have done in a similar sort of field. So you are um, trying to sort of build a connection and you've got some commonalities. Um, and um, so I think those are probably the key things. So what is it you want, as I've said twice before already, what is it you want them to know about you? Um, but what is it that's made you contact them as a specific individual? Um, and maybe what you are looking to offer them or what you're looking to, to maybe do with them or gain from them. Um, and whether you wanted to mention that you wanted to, to work with them, to, for them to be your mentor, um, you, you might want to sort of say that uh, uh, up front. Um, but I would keep it short. Um, don't sort of, you know, go to long, long, long screens. Um, keep, it, um, keep it within at least one screen. And I don't mean make your writing very tiny. Um, <laughs> And make, make it uh, make it that something that people can can easily see um, what you're saying um, on one screen without having to scroll up and down. Maybe provide a couple of links, and so if they're interested, they can then take that a bit further. Um, and there is a question that's kind of like ties into that um, from Tom. Um, I, I think this refers to your mentoring network um, at Screen Skills. But when pairing mentors and with mentees. What makes successful mentees stand out in your mind? What makes successful mentees? Mentees, yeah. Okay, um, my one thing is to have a goal. Have a real specific um, thing that you want to work on in mentoring. Um, because mentoring isn't just a nice chat over a cup of coffee. Um, it's a proper professional partnership. Um, it has a beginning, um, each conversation has a beginning, a middle and an end. It's not just a woolly thing that we talk about this and then I moan about as a mentee and then we moan, I moan about this and it goes around in circles. It's a proper professional partnership. And if you set the agenda as a mentee, the agenda is what is it that you want to work towards within mentoring? What is it? What are your goals for mentoring? What is your topic, your question, your query for your mentor? And the more specific you can be, the more um, benefit you'll get from that short conversation that you have with your mentor. If you go in with, with a woolly topic um, or you just think, I want to know their story or um, I'm not quite sure, but it might be nice to meet this person or to have them as my mentor, it's not going to work. So have a specific focus of what it is you want from that mentoring partnership that is within the power and the gift of you and your mentor to do together. Yeah, that's really nice. Um, we uh, are um, running out of time, but I really wanted to ask one last question that actually came from uh, Matthew um, to close this off. And that is, uh, why is community so important in times like this? So obviously at the moment, uh, we are um, all at home, um, isolated from other people. We also have uh, had a week of really, um, Hard, really hard week of um, you know events happening in the uh, in the US, but also in the UK here, and communities really, really, really coming together to support each other. Um, so, um, why do you think that the community is the film community uh, is um, really important um, at the moment? Um, Hannah, yeah, <laughs> sorry, that's <laughs> fine. Um, so, um, we've all got to get creative now because we're not able to create the same work that we've been creating for the last however many years. So um, collaboration in ways to work out new processes for shooting, not only on set, you know, how are we gonna mic someone up? How are we gonna hair and makeup someone? How are we gonna shoot that scene with a relationship which is really pinnacle that they're tactile or whatever? How are we gonna do that? So. Um, you're only going to work those things out from collaborating with people and brainstorming and really sitting down and coming out with some new innovative ideas because otherwise all of the content is going to look exactly the same and uh, we're all going to be very bored of um, a very claustrophobic Zoom recording as a TV program for the rest of our, you know, 
the rest of the year, maybe. So um, collaboration is super important and getting different people's voices and especially, you know, mentioning the things that have been happening this week. Collaboration in that sense is um, something that is uh, really needs to be uh, focused on so that we can make sure that we are highlighting different people's voices and listening to the stories from actors, especially right now who are um, telling stories about things that have happened to them in drama schools that, you know, I, I didn't know and it, a lot of people don't know. So collaboration in that sense, so that we know how the system is flawed and how we can work to make everything better and more accessible and diversify everything we're doing. So um, now more than ever, collaboration is very important. Really nice. And Petra, it, would you add anything to that? I think uh, collaboration and communities is now is the like thing that can elevate us, you know, because uh, everyone is now kind of alone, you know, and uh, in their own bubble, and you know, you need to reach out and you need to reach out for support as well, and that's how you elevate yourself, how you, you know, how you get motivated, because also the film industry, you know. They are really open to help each other. So how you get feedback from something, how you can, uh, you know, invest in, um, especially in this time to uh, do a different things, collaborate, and just to, you know, kind of uh, get the message there that you are not alone and everyone kind of need collaboration to survive, you know, and also to, uh, you know, elevate their careers. So that's uh, the most uh, necessary thing, communities. Jane? Um, thank you. So um, I think that um, collaboration and connection is really important. Um, we've talked from my point of view about, you know, men have finding a mentor, um, but think about maybe finding some buddies um, think about finding some champions. Um, so, it, you know, a whole variety of different sorts of um, types of relationships. And this is the creative industry. You know, we are the creative industries. And being creative is about um, bouncing ideas off each other, about talking with people um, and interacting with people who are not like you. Um, and as Hannah was saying, that's how the industry is going to remain fresh and relevant. Um, is by, um, by being as diverse as possible and having those conversations and learning from each other um, and um, bringing in new ideas and new experiences. So collaboration is absolutely at the heart of the creativity within our industry. Right. Yeah, I agree. And it's so um, nice to see so many of you sharing your um, uh, social media handles and portfolios in the chat. We um, really um, do hope that um, you can make little uh, networking communities and work together on your um, upcoming projects. Um, thank you so much, um, Hannah, Petra and Jane for your um, time today. Uh, it's been great, um, very short, but uh, great having you around. Uh, thanks everyone for all your um, insightful questions. Um, I'm sorry we uh, couldn't get um, to all of them, but we will try to answer some of them um, over our um, social media channels um, throughout next week, um, if we can. Um, I know that uh, most of you are uh, probably waiting in anticipation to find out if you're the lucky winner of the Lacey hard drive. Uh, but just before I get to that, I uh, wanted to um, uh, tell you a couple of other things. One is um, that we put together a short survey and we would love to hear what you thought um, of this session. I think Fiona will post the link to the survey um, shortly in the um, chat box, but it will also be uh, sent to you uh, via email from Eventbrite after this event. If you can help um, spare a few minutes, tell us what you thought, that would be great. Um, your feedback after the last lab was really useful. So um, you can tell us if we've improved or not uh, since then. Um, and I also wanted to announce our next lab. Um, it will take place on the 4th of July. Uh, and the title is um, Upskilling in Isolation, Screen Live, Mastering the Art of Technical Revolution in Film. So uh, in that lab, we'll focus on new immersive storytelling format called Screen Live um, that allows filmmakers to tell their stories entirely on computer, tablet, or smartphone screens. Um, and this revolutionary Screen Live technology was developed by the um, award-winning producer and director Timur Beckman-Beto. Um, sorry. 
Um, he is Russia's top grossing filmmaker. I think his Hollywood debut was um, with a film Wanted with Angelina Jolie and Morgan Freeman. Um, but he is the pioneer of the screen life um, technology and he won the audience awards in Berlin and South by Southwest in 2018 for his political thriller um, profile using this um, technology. So we are really delighted to announce that Timur will be joining us for a masterclass um, to discuss the inception of um, screen life, but also most importantly to tell you how you guys can use this technology for your upcoming projects. Um, we will be opening registrations for this lab on Monday, the 22nd of June. Uh, but until then, uh, we um, have created a Facebook group, um, uh, I think which Fiona will post um, shortly in the chat box if she hasn't already. If you just wanna click on attending uh, on that Facebook group, we'll be posting all updates about this event there. So um, once the registration's open, you'll be the first to know. Um, so do check out the Facebook event. And now for the winner of the Lacey competition. Um, so um, thank you so much for all your great questions. It was hard um, choosing um, the best ones. Um, the way this is gonna work is I'm just gonna read out um, um, your name. If you are here um, and um, to claim your prize, then please write here um, in the chat box so that we can um, see you. We'll give you a few seconds to do that. If we don't hear from you, we'll move on um, to the next name. So have your, uh, be ready, have your uh, fingers on the keyboard. Uh, and the winner of the Lacey um, Rugged two terabyte hard drive is um, Julia Gianetti. Uh, Julia, Julia, you're there. Wow, <laughs> that was really speedy. Congratulations, Julia. Um, I will be in touch with you next week about mailing your prize. Um, thank you everyone uh, who joined the session today. Um, it was great to have you. Um, if you have been selected to participate in one-on-one -on -one mentoring sessions with Hannah and Petra this afternoon, then we'll speak to you later, but otherwise have a lovely weekend, everyone. Bye. Thank you, panelists. Bye. Bye.